The T1 Trust was formed in 2014 by a group of volunteers, enthusiasts, rail fans. We saw what they did in Europe with the A1 Trust and thought, man, if they could do that there, we can do that here. So uh, the T1 Trust was formed, really took an engineering approach to putting this whole thing together and a fundraising approach. And then year by year, we've just continued to grow and expand uh, until uh, you see the point we're at now and crossing the 50% construction mark and uh, accelerating that uh, each year. We acquired 99.7% of the original drawings of the Pennsylvania Railroad T1 locomotive, which was a huge, huge benefit to us. So we took those original 2D drawings, converted them to modern 3D CAD drawings, so we could actually manufacture parts from that. We don't have the same abilities we had back in the 1940s on the casting, but we have much better welding fabrication now than they had back then. So it's a trade-off on that. So we had to take the original cast frame and do about, took us about two years worth of engineering to engineer it correctly into an weldment um, that you see behind me uh, so that we can actually manufacture it. It's kind of like painting a room and painting yourself in a corner. Uh, we have to be thinking 10 steps ahead on every move that we make. So we've had a whole plan of operation to weld this thing up step by step and get it to where it is right now. So behind me is the frame of the locomotive. It's about 75% completion at this stage of the game. You'll see it's sitting on two I-beams. Uh, the I-beams are there for structural reasons. They're actually there to hold the frame of the locomotive from warping and twisting during the welding. As you weld two pieces of steel together, as that weld pulls, it shrinks and it pulls together and puts stress on it. So you need to have something holding the plates in place. When you do your weld, it will hold it all together so it doesn't warp and twist as you go. So that maintains that this frame, which is 64 feet long, is no more than one eighth of an inch out when it's all said and done. Here at Dover Tank Plate, have done an amazing job maintaining those specs throughout the whole locomotive. As you see it here, it's actually flipped upside down, sitting on, so the bottom here is, this is actually the top of the locomotive, and then that's the bottom. The big hole there you see in the middle, this is the front of the, the frame. That hole is where the front coupler pocket's gonna be, so the coupler will be mounted in there when it's all said and done, and then all your air brake lines come through there. Your front pilot, your cow catcher will be put on the front of the locomotive, and then you have all your streamlining on here as well. This next step here going back is pretty easy to understand. So this is the front set of cylinders will get welded uh, right here right to this piece here. So that the cylinders become part of the actual frame when it's all said and done. And you can kind of see this indention where it goes. This is where the front engine truck sits. So there's two axles up here on the locomotive and it'll pivot right here in the middle on the front. That helps lead this locomotive through a curve, through a switch, and also helps take the weight on the front of the smoke box area of the locomotive. So it's part of the frame, and a very important part of the frame, is where you tie it to the boiler. This part here is what's called the saddle, uh, and the smoke box actually will mount in this. So there'll actually be some holes in this that'll, that'll bring the exhaust gases from the cylinders into here, and then there's blast nozzles that'll be inside this that are directly underneath the smokestacks. When the frame leaves the shop here, this will be welded onto it and ready for mounting. They set the bottom pieces on right now, the next step here is it'll get an outside piece put on here to box all this in, the box frame, all the way down both sides of the locomotive. The air compressors will actually be mounted right in this, this general vicinity right now. So right here is what you're looking at is the front set of wheels of the locomotive where they go, the drivers. There'll be a pin that'll be through here. So there's another plate like this that'll be on the outside. And a pin that goes through here that allows the, the spring rigging of this thing. So just like your car, this has suspension on it. And then in here, these two open pockets here are where the drivers actually ride up and down in as they're going down the railroad. What most people will never see is all the box structure that's built inside the frame. And that allows additional piping to move through from one end of the locomotive to the other with inside the frame. So we'll have plumbing put inside this thing as well when it's all said and done. We designed the frame, we thought, well, we can just take the old frame, convert it over. But then it turns out we had to go through a lot of extra effort to uh, do all the engineering on the spring rigging and the brake rigging at that same time to make sure nothing interferes. There's a lot of systems going on inside this thing that we didn't want to interfere with each other when converting it from a casting to a weldment. That took a lot of extra time uh, that we didn't really anticipate, but the end product, we're very uh, happy with that. Now we have all the engineering complete for the spring rigging, brake rigging. We can order those pieces as they come ready to go. 
get into the rear of the locomotive. The actual firebox is going to be sitting right, right here downward on this. So the, the trailing truck locomotive will be right here. So you have two wheels back here, then the cabs uh, be underneath this. One thing we get questions about a lot of times are the welding. All the welds are one of two methodologies to do it. When we have a nice flat run surface, we'll use what's called sub arc or submerged arc welding. It puts a layer of almost like sand down and then it welds inside that and then sucks the sand back up at the end of it so that there's no oxygen getting in where the weld is. It can be run hotter and penetration is deeper. It's a more perfect weld and that's the preferred method. But some of the curves and stuff, you can't set the machine up to go do that. So you end up welding it by hand and, and use a lot of metal core weld that they use to weld this all out, which is just as good. They run high heat on it and uh, really get it in there to get good penetration. Then afterwards, the welds are ultrasounded or uh, radiographed to make sure that there's no imperfections in the welds. The file when this frame is done will be three, four inches thick of paper of all the welds, the processes, procedures for every weld you see on this thing is documented. Who did it, what machine did it, what the settings on the machine were when that weld was made. So um, a lot of steps to it. That's why choosing the right partner to do this is very important. If steam locomotives were still being manufactured in the 2020s, this is how they would be manufactured. There's no doubt about that. Even diesel locomotives are fabricated their frames the same way. If other organizations want to come out and build a locomotive that's no longer around, we've basically given them the blueprint of how to do it and done the engineering, saved them a bunch of time, effort, and energy. It's everyday donors such as yourself that are making this project happen. We really need you to step up and continue to us on our target so that we can be completed by 2030 so that you, your kids, your grandkids will be able to enjoy this locomotive for generations to come. With the frame being completed, we're over 50%. Uh, we're accelerating construction each year. We can only do that through generous donations. So please consider us in your next time of giving. We would love to take your money and turn it into steel. You can do that by going to the Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Trust website, and that's t1trust.org. And think of us the next time you're in a giving mood.